hello students uh, now this is the second problem that we'll be having a look at okay the second problem is that of a beam consider that there is a cantilever beam okay which is fixed at one end okay and you give it certain initial condition you disturb it over here or you give certain initial velocity at this end and now this beam is vibrating oscillating in this fashion Okay, so this is uh, the new profile of the beam. Okay, so uh, you have to find out differential equation of the system now. Okay, so now what we are going to do is we are going to uh, kind of tackle this problem in a slightly different fashion. Okay, in the previous case we have uh, what we have done is we have found out the free body diagram of it and then solved it. Okay, so uh, uh, rather than going in that approach, we are going to go for a slightly different approach. What we'll be doing is. We'll be considering the static behavior of the beam to start with. Okay, so let's consider that this is the side view of the beam. Okay, and let's assume that you are putting or you are applying certain pressure over here, which is P. Okay, if you apply the pressure over here, now that beam is going to deform by x units. Okay, when x is very small for very small deformations, you might have already seen in your previous uh, your classes. That's, that this deformation can be approximated by euler bernoulli hypo hypothesis which tells us that this is equal to pl cube over 3 ei where l is equal to length of the beam uh, this is capital l okay length is uh, this l is length of the beam e is young's modulus of elasticity of the beam material i is area moment of inertia of the beam's cross section Okay, so you, what you have to do is you have to take the cross section of the beam okay, and look at that cross section. Now that cross section will look something like this. Okay. Let's say in that case you have to kind of take the angular acceleration. Uh, sorry, uh, you have to take area moment of inertia of that cross section about this axis, okay, about which it is going to bend. And if you do so, then you are, you are going to find out this I, okay, and that is what is going and sitting over here. So in this sense, you can find out the displacement x if you apply p units of force, which essentially means that p by x is equal to 3 e i over l cube. Okay. So 3 e i over l cube is the quantity which is equal to force required for per unit displacement in transverse direction. So how much amount of transverse direction force you need to apply over here in order to get unique a displacement unit or transverse displacement over here so this is this much amount of force which essentially means that this is the stiffness of the spring okay uh, or of this beam okay so if you approximate this beam by using a spring then you can say that this is the stiffness which is offered by that beam in order to deform so that if you apply p units of force it is going to give you x units of displacement okay? if you apply this much amount of force you are going to get one unit of displacement in the transverse direction so this is the stiffness of the beam in order to bend okay in order to have this transverse direction deflection so what we are going to do is that we are going to use this quantity directly okay and going to construct the equation which is mx double dot plus kx equal to zero we'll be replacing this x by this stiffness which we have found from the static analysis so we have carried out the static analysis we have found the stiffness over here and we are just putting this uh, quantity in this particular equation and hence we'll be replacing this k by using 3 ei by l q and what is this m m is mass of this particular beam okay so i can approximate this is a very crude approximation we are going to have a look at it and we are going to see that why this is a crude approximation and what is it that we are missing and if you want to refine what all we need to do okay so we'll be having a look at it at very uh, almost towards end of this course okay but this in uh, at present this is what is the differential equation where mx double dot plus 3 ei l cube x is equal to 0. This is the spring stiffness. Okay? So if you approximate this beam by using an equivalent spring, which essentially means that you are doing something like this. Okay, So you have a mass block okay, which is attached with a spring to this 
uh, wall okay so either you represent it in this fashion or you represent it in this fashion okay so mass attached to the wall by using a spring where the spring constant is equal to 3 e i by l and this is m and this x represents transverse deflection okay x quantity which is this equivalent masses displacement in this direction is nothing but this transverse deflection of the beam okay if x is transverse deflection of the beam then you can write down equivalent uh, you can construct the equivalent system and uh, construct this differential equation now if you want to find out omega n what you will be doing is you will be converting it to this form okay bring everything from this side to this one uh, this is m equal to 0 now this quantity is nothing but omega n square so it is x double dot plus omega n square x is equal to 0 and hence omega n square is equal to 3 e i over m l cube and this is omega n square and omega n therefore is equal to 3 e i over m l cube this is the natural frequency of oscillation of this beam okay otherwise again as i said everything else remains the same the moment you have arrived at this equation now what you have to do is replace omega n by this quantity and inherit whatever that we have done in case of this spring mass system just put it over here use omega n this new omega n and you are done okay, you don't have to solve the system entirely once again okay so that is the beauty of what we are doing that's why we started with studying the spring mass system so we have in detail analyzed the spring mass system and now we are kind of mapping all realistic systems into this and we are using inferences understandings which are developed in this case which is spring mass system and putting them in the realistic up user i mean realistic utilities realistic conditions okay so in this case always we are kind of boiling down to, to this equation which is x double dot plus omega n square x is equal to 0 and its solution that you are aware of is equal to a times cosine of omega n t minus 5 okay so this is the or you can also write down this as a times sine of omega n t plus phi 2 or psi whatever that you call okay so uh, <coughs> okay so we haven't talked about one thing although we have uh, kind of seen that but we haven't talked about that this is called as harmonic function this is harmonic function so what is harmonic into it actually this is the function which is satisfying this differential equation and this differential equation is showing that there is harmony between the acceleration and the displacement whenever you have harmony between the second derivative and that function itself then whatever is the solution of that differential equation is the harmonic function which happens to be equal to cosine or sine or th these are nothing but they these are the same one you can say that cos omega nt minus pi by 2 is nothing but sine omega nt right so sine omega nt is no different than cos omega nt just you have to subtract it uh, this this much amount of phase you need to subtract if you do so then you kind of bounce back to this sign so sine and cosine are no different okay, so uh, those are called as sinusoidal functions and these sinusoidal function functions are solving this differential equation these are harmonic in nature so this is harmonic problem this is simple harmonic okay so there is only one single harmonic uh, involved into it okay we have one single frequency and one single harmonic so that's why this is a simple harmonic solution simple harmonic function okay uh, that we have seen in this case okay so this form remains identical either uh, let it be for the spring mass system or for the pendulum's case that we have studied before or in this case which is this cantilever beam in all these three cases the problem form remained same which is this one okay x double dot plus omega n square x equal to zero you will also have to specify x zero and x dot zero in order to satisfy in order to kind of uh, get the solution completely with which you will be able to find out 
a and phi. Once you once you know x zero and x dot zero, you will be able to find out a and phi. Omega n you already have derived, which is three e i over m l cube. Okay. So with this much, we are done with the problem of B Maxwell.